Still gonna ask me questions. I'm asking you questions. All right, come on, ready? You ready? ready? I'm ready. All right, man. Uh, just give me a little bit about where you're from and how you grew up. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. I grew up in the slums. You already know. Oh uh, yeah, it's 601 all the way. Long live dude. You know, I did a lot of back home. Like such like, as get money. Yeah, all right. Man. I mean, you don't have to specifically tell me how you got money. You want to specifically tell me? Nah. I used to, I used to break into people's houses. I, I even broke into a church one time. So, really? oh yeah, man. I was, I was way out there. See, yeah, I, I ain't. Want pastor to preach to me who ain't never, never been through that. I didn't been See, through I all. See, I ain't gonna lie. This is my pastor the same way. So, yeah. See, I never, I never broke into houses. Yep. Only thing I did was sell drugs. Yep. But other than that, yep. I ain't breaking into houses. That's different. I'm you saying know, another man. question. Yeah, so uh, so where do you see yourself in five to ten years? A millionaire. A millionaire? Gonna How you gonna become a millionaire? <laughs> what you gonna do with all that money? What I do now? Like what? Huh, we ball. Uh, are you a little tipsy? Nah, I don't okay. drink. Oh. This Coke, Coca Cola. All you right. No, I don't drink. You see me at the club and I don't drink. You said hey. what you were doing at the club? Karaoke. So so tell me what's your thoughts about the afterlife? As soon as the lights, they lights go out, God come back for the breath He let you ball. What do you think happens to a person when they die? <laughs> Hey, man. See, I don't know about that one. Right. We, we know everybody's going to die. We already know that's going to be happening. No, you don't have to. show the church. They need to see your money. They need to see it. I ain't, it, man. I, I, I ain't no bad influence. I'm going to let y'all know that can on I put you on there? Hey, so, so what's your thoughts about the afterlife? What do you think happens to a person when they die? Me, personally. Personally? Um, what's your personal? Me, personally. Yeah. I, me, personally, I believe. I believe once, like, we're dead. It's over? I ain't gonna say it's, I ain't gonna say it's over. I, I believe in this afterlife, like the word. What it is, one hundred and forty-four. What it is, one hundred and forty-four thousand. I think it is. They say they're gonna make it to heaven. Yeah. So it's like, if you think about it, that's pretty. That's pretty slim to me. So, like, my thoughts, to be honest, like, heaven. Like, we is on heaven. Heaven is this heaven. You right think here. this heaven? It, to me personally, yeah. It's like because like. If you don't make it into that in, into that little small little hundred and forty four thousand, then like who, who told you that though about the hundred forty four thousand? Oh no, I read like I read that in the word. Really? Yeah. Uh, let me show you a trick real quick. Okay. Right. Let me show you something real quick. All right, this is my uh, this is my wedding uh, ring. Check that. Sound there. See that? Hold on, do it again. You see me grab it? You see that? I just pull it out there. Nah, you putting it in that hand, man. <laughs> Watch. Here we go. See that? Went through me like that? Nah, you had it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nah, I'll give, well, give, give you one more. I'll give you one more. All right. Uh, all right, if I give you some money, can you turn it into something? So don't try to. <laughs> 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 I'm going to get that ain't it. That ain't it. I'm going to give him a 20. Turn that up too. And I'm going to give you a 100. Turn it into the three. <laughs> Well, here's the deal. Facebook yeah, I'm every, you, every single 24 hours, 150,000 people die every single 24 yes. hours around the world. Because they moving wrong. Yeah. Or based on what the Bible says, you're going to stand before a righteous, holy God. Yes. And he, you're going to give an account of how you live. So let me give you the good person test. All right. To see exactly where you're going to fare up. If hell, hell is real and heaven is real, 0% you go to hell. 100% you get into heaven. Where you feel like you fall? Well, I ain't going to lie. Yeah, I feel like I fall in 100%. That heaven. you're going to get in heaven? Yeah. Okay, all right. And I'll give my reason for that. My reason, give me a reason. My reason being because despite what I do, you know, in the streets or whatever, like, I, I make it my point to always reach out to the young generation. Okay. Like, I help when it, I help when I have it. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Like, we get back to the knees. That's, that's, that's get back what, to the knees. That's I get, okay. Feel like it's about, that's what we do. Because, like, I, do, I no, do. Ain't no one person perfect. Ain't nobody ain't perfect. Ain't nobody perfect, man. You get yep. what I'm saying? So, with that being said, like, I live my life, like, as I live my life, as I see yeah. fit. I believe, you believe that there's a higher power. Come on, you And need, I know that there's a higher this. power. So, with that being said, like, I, I <laughs> look at it, I look at me getting it to heaven as a hundred percent because just a, just off just off of me being the person that I am, the gift, the yep. heart that I have, bless countless of people and and, and, and we left with nothing. Been out here and been homeless and yeah, man. slept with my kids and, and my mm. baby mama at the time. So you been through it? Get, like I don't been through it. Like you know what I'm saying? So, do it's I like think I'm gonna get in know? heaven? I do. Trouble, I do now. Nah. Is that true or not? I can't say. You can't say. Or, also, what's in the word? It it do tells you um yeah can't no person say who's going to heaven or hell. 
All right. Now, you may be surprised about this, but the Bible does actually say that a man can know exactly where they're going to spend eternity. Is that how you, the, Bible say what? the Bible says you can know. Like it says that you may know that you have eternal life. Give me an example. How would you know? Let, let me give you the good person test. So you'll know. Let me give you the good person test. You ever heard of the Ten Commandments? Come on, Ten Commandments. Talk to him. All right. This is how God is going to measure you. This is going to determine where you're going to spend eternity and where you're going to spend eternity in hell or heaven. All right. So the Ten Commandments is like a mirror to the soul. Like when you get up in the morning time, the first thing you go do is you look into the mirror to try to figure out what's broken. So you can fix it. Yes. But the commandments is like a mirror to the inside of you. Most what people if, don't but, know. But what if you wake up and you ain't got to fix nothing? Well, you good. All right. Then. All right. But here's, here's the know. commandments. See, I... Doobie going to ask you the first one. Uh, all right. So how many lies y'all ever told? I yeah. told a lie. I ain't going to lie. I lied to a <laughs> day. I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. I'm gonna I have to. Every every I, man gonna listen. I, let me tell you something. Every man gonna lie to a female. Ooh, name somebody who ain't gonna lie to a female. Yeah. Like like if I go with him, get what I'm finna do with him. What? We finna get some money. Okay. <laughs> how we gonna get money? Preacher man, so how we gonna get money? Man? Hey preacher, we on count. Okay. <laughs> hey, we gonna go out there and tell. Now keep in mind, pastor. All right. I did what I said. We on camera. So. I know what going all right, here, all right, that's, that's the first commandment. Here's another commandment. So have you ever stolen anything, even if it's small? No. This, I ain't going to lie. This for y'all kids, because I know he might show y'all. Stay in school. Don't okay. be like me. <laughs> Why I'm you a good man now, though. I ain't, I ain't finished school, but I, I know how to count. Yeah. And I know how to read and write. Yeah. You have heard it was said that you should not commit adultery. I'm married. But then Jesus says, if anyone looks at a woman with lust, Why they commit adultery. Ever looked at someone with lust, had sex out of marriage, watch yeah, porn, ran over yeah, yeah. Have sex with women outside of God's design? Yeah. Yeah. It's not sex is not bad, it's just when you take it outside of marriage is when it becomes yeah, bad. See, y'all old. <laughs> so it's different. I'm old. Yeah. yeah. You're right, I am old. Did all the commandments, we see that we've broken all of his standards at if you have at least once. So if God is a good judge, that means that he can't just let men go into heaven without proper punishment. It'll be like a judge. That lets a murderer go or a child molester go because he paid him off. See, that judge is not a good judge. He's a dirty judge. So yeah. if God let us in and let you in and let you in in heaven without giving you the proper punishment, what he kind dirty. of judge would he be? He He'll dirty. be a dirty God. He a dirty Does God. that make sense? Yes. It makes so a lot of sense. what is the punishment for sin based on what the Bible says? You have any idea what the punishment for sin is? It's a, it's a wage. You know what a wage? Like if you work, go work, you earn a wage. What well, the yeah. Bible says, the payment for or the wages of your sin is death. It means a separation from God in a place called hell because we all sin against God. And if he doesn't give us hell, he'll be a crooked judge because yeah. he's, a, he's supposed to do what a good judge does. But you know you got crooked folks out here. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You got crooked police, you got crooked pastors, you got crooked... Crooked everything. pastors, everything. But there's no imperfection oh, you know. when it comes to God. What's your favorite drink in the world? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> okay. If I took one drop of, of sewage... If I took one drop of sewage and I put it in your drink, you wouldn't drink it because it contaminates the whole rest. Yes. See, God is so perfect. Managed. Yeah. <laughs> God is so perfect and so holy. He cannot allow one of your sins into his heaven or in imperfect heaven. So he has to clean it up before you are let in. I'm going to keep it real. But you keep it real. Come on. God with me every time. Yeah. Just read my jacket. What's your jacket? Yeah, God. Oh, Jack. <laughs> Is that it? That's but well, you ain't heard the good news yet. You hey, I hear you. Too good news. And but let me what? And these jackets ain't cheap. But it, oh, but it's, see, it's it's a lowercase g god. You know what that god represents, right? Yeah. It's the god of the world. It's not the god of the Bible. The, let you, me. You heard what he said. Amen. The god of the world. So what you think I want to be? A god in the world. Thank you. All right, but let me give you the good news <laughs> before you leave. Let me give you the good news. All right, here's the good news. Here's the best part of this. The good news is, even though we're guilty. The Bible says that God made a way for you to be completely made right with him or completely made perfect, even though you sin and even though I sin. This is a message that changed my life. I'll give you a quick illustration and I'll be finished. That 2,000 years ago, God loved you so much that even though you were, a, we all guilty and deserve hell, he sent his son Jesus. And Jesus, he loved us so much that Jesus took the punishment that we deserve. So it's almost like, it, let's just say you stood there before the judge because you murdered people. The judge is about to give you an electric chair. All of a sudden, he sentences you to the electric chair because you kill folks. They put you in that chair, they strap you in, they put they the electric hammer. Yeah, but yeah, because you, you took life. Like yeah. a, he has to do what a good judge does. So at ten days there ain't later, no good judge though. Because you gotta look at it. Cause you self-defense, most of them kill uh I'm just talking about a oh, legitimate okay. murder. Yeah, a legitimate yeah. murder. Yeah, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down. I know, yeah. but the legitimate murder, it's a lot of people that murder people that never been caught. Okay. But this you let's just say you murder people, they put you in an electric chair, they finally caught you, 
and they put you in that strap in that chair all of a sudden the executioner goes out of the room and says you have any last word before i flip the switch what are you gonna say nothing all right because you deserve it it ain't gonna you can't, it ain't say, gonna, nothing. You can't say nothing you can't you can't even say my love you can't even say it's over man yeah. and here's my point my point is that judge is gonna do what a good judge does he gonna, and go he gonna flip the switch you. but to your surprise do you remember the judge that sentenced you to the rifle electric chair? He he comes into the room and kicks open the door. And you're surprised to see the judge that actually gave you the rifle punishment. And he's standing there with tears running down his face. And he's holding his two-year-old innocent son, his son that he bore. He takes his keys out of his pocket and unhooks your arm of constraints. And he tells you to stand next to the chair. With, with tears in his eyes, he kisses his son one last time. He puts his innocent son in your place and straps him into that chair. He's showing him right from wrong. He puts his son in your place. He straps in that chair. He goes out of the room. And with tears in his eyes, he takes that, that switch and he flips it. And he switch and he kills his son for a guilty murder like you. He dirty. He looks at you, falls on his knees, and comes back in the execution room. He says, man, if you see how much I love you and I'll give you a second chance? If you would accept what my son has done in this chair, I'll let you go free with no penalty because an innocent person has paid your fine. You only got two choices. You can either accept what the judge has done and walk free, and your life will be changed. I couldn't do it. Because. I would have let that son live his life. I understand. And I would have died. I understand, but here's the deal. But if you reject what the dad has did, did with his son, now you're left to the anger of the judge because he executed his son for you. So here's what I'm getting at. I work for the judge. Well, here's the deal. You can't work it off. No. It's a life for a life. But here's my point. I couldn't pick the son over me. Well, here's well, you take the you execution. Lost me right there. You, now I here's my point. Two thousand years ago, God loved you so much that He sent His baby boy as He became a man, uh, as a boy. He sends His son Jesus. Jesus grows up, lives a life, per perfect life, never sinned, but roughly two thousand years ago, and He loves us so much that He went to that cross and laid Himself on that cross and took our punishment, and it was all of our fault. All of our sin went to Jesus, and the Bible says Jesus, God crushed his own son for our sin. And whose fault was it? Was it was ours. But he's ours. willing to give you complete forgiveness and let you into heaven for all eternity if you be willing to do two things. If you be willing to give up your life, your, what you can control, the Bible says repent and follow Jesus. And not just with your mouth, but with your whole life. The Bible says God will let you into heaven with no penalty. Because his son has paid your price. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a grace that you don't deserve. I don't deserve it. I've done things. I've done things, man, that I never should be. I should have been in hell a long time ago, but he showed me mercy. He showed you the good way. He showed me the good way. And, man, I'm that's why I'm out here. You ain't go I'm not in the church. I'm 